Yeah, and it's Maximus here. As you can see from the thumbnail photo, my cat won't even wake up with heavy ratchets on her. She's too used to hand tools, I guess. I'm not sure why. Might be because she's always around them and always used to the smells of hand tools. These were on the deal shelf. I couldn't believe all three of them. I assume that somebody bought these from Harbor Freight. For some reason or another, didn't like them. Didn't keep the packaging for them. Those little hangers returned them, and so these ended up on the Purple Tag discount shelf. So I got all three of these for like 48 bucks or something. Normal retail price on these Quins, $75 for all three. So they're actually, that's actually a reasonable price for rebranded gear wrenches. And that's the deal. I, you know, Harbor Freight, I just talked in my last video how about Harbor Freight is now buying, getting tools from all this, you know, a lot of the same companies that um, True Value Hardware, Home Depot, etc. are. One of them is Apex Tools, who owns Gear Wrench. And so Harbor Freight decided to get some upgraded sealed head Quinn ratchets, which are gear wrench ratchets, just rebranded gear wrench ratchets with different casting on the reverse switch. And we'll show inside, but these really are in a different handle. Handle's a little bit more bulbous on the gear wrench, but it's exactly the same. I and mean, when we have the little indentation, it's a little more accentuated on the gear wrench. You know, they're just precisely the same ratchet. Both are 90 teeth. A little more embellished on the actual gear wrench version but compared to the icons which you know i do like uh these gear you know gear wrench ratchets have been tested quite a bit quite a few test to failure videos on gear wrench ratchets and they actually seem to do pretty decent maybe not the absolute strongest but they actually are pretty decent always landing at least in the middle of the pack if not better and so for the prices the normal retail prices of these quins 30 for the half inch, 25 for the three eighths, and 20 bucks for the quarter inch. These are really competitive. I mean, I'm sure these things would be five or within five or ten percent of the strength of the icons. And to tell you the truth, and I've noticed that with a lot of the icons and people have commented, is the icons have quite a bit of back drag. Where on these gear wrenches, the back drag just a little, a little bit less. Maybe the anvils aren't quite as tight. You know, there is a bit of looseness, which is. A characteristic of gear wrench uh, ratchets they use snap rings to hold them together so there are no screws to get loose or anything pretty easy to operate the reverse lever and once again they have a pretty reliable mechanism I mean they even made sure to have a little chamfer on the corner of the ratchet just like the genuine gear wrenches so that's kind of uh, the whole purpose of this video is just the fact that Harbor Freight is now selling gear wrench, at least straight handle ratchets, under the Quinn name. And they, the executives may not fully realize, but um, the gear wrenches are close enough in quality to the icons that Harbor Freight is actually going to be undercutting themselves by selling these ratchets. And what I'm going to do here is show that there really are... See, that snap ring was upside down. Truly the same. We have our the one characteristic, which is a really thin bottom plates on gear wrenches. Most times it's not a big deal, but I have read in certain situations where people let these bang around just in the bottom of toolboxes, which really isn't a big deal for a lot of ratchets, causes dings. But on these bottom plates... People have commented they've had a bunch of tools and random pliers and stuff in a toolbox. Set it down hard or it's kind of bouncing in the back of their pickup truck. And they get a little dent in these thin bottom plates. And they'll just end up unlucky enough where they'll get a little dent in this area. And then that ends up capturing and, and pressing against the paw. And they have to pull it out and just flip it over. But even internally... I mean, these things are just totally identical, as a matter of fact. Although the paws are going to end up kind of springing around everywhere. Which is just what happens with these ratchets. I can pull the paw out of the quin. Or the anvil, I should say. Pop it into the gear wrench here. Come on, camera. 
there we go. So now that's the Quinn Paul in the gear wrench body. Really is precisely the same. I will mention that I really like coarser tooth ratchets, and you know, there's some big YouTubers who've done a lot of videos showing, and when a lot of ratchets they fail, they can get damaged, these super fine teeth. So even though they work for a while, you have to really keep these ratchets clean, and there just isn't much cross-sectional area. I mean, the problem with super fine teeth is when you get flakes of metal, obviously these teeth are so shallow that a very small flake of metal can push the pole away and cause it to slip. Take apart modern, you know, quarter drills or maybe Milwaukee Sawzalls from old ones to ones that have been made in the last 20 years or so. And you'll find that manufacturers in their gears have gone with coarser teeth because they simply the cross-sectional area is increased. Finer teeth and ratchets give you less arc swing, but they just are not going to last as many cycles. If you actually do put these in a ratchet testing machine where it has a particular load and ratchets these, the amount of clicks will be less than say a coarser tooth ratchet. Something like this just has deeper cuts. Each tooth just has a lot more steel to work to wear out and go through. And of course those are the tests that are performed the least on YouTube videos etc because they take a long time. It takes a long time to make a machine or an apparatus that puts a f quite a bit of tension on a ratchet and then has it sit there and actually ratchet it over and over and over again for hours and weeks and months on end until the thing finally wears out. And that is really how it goes with finer ratchet teeth. Exceptions would be gearless ratchets because they have spry clutches and they work in a completely different fashion. So that's kind of the deal is I put most of my you know, most of my work, it was pretty dry in this ratchet. I don't have to check the others. But most of the ratcheting, you know, the most heavily used ratchets are my coarser tooth ones. And the fine tooth ones are just in certain situations where you really need that tiny amount of arc swing. And all these ratchets, the half inch actually had a little bit of pretty kind of heavy grease, so I always use a light lubricant, three in one oil, sewing machine oil, just something light. And really, that's our recommendation. I mean, as far as Harbor Freight's concerned, I'd recommend these Quins over the Icons because they're a lot cheaper. I mean, they don't, you know, and maybe they may start coming out with a bigger variety of these with long handles, flex handles, that type of thing. That's where the Icons still have an advantage but as far as the standard straight ratchets Harbor Freight is undercutting themselves. I mean These quint these gear wrench quins are going to be real close To the quality of strength durability of the icons and uh, Kind of once people start learning that they'll start selling less icons just because the quins do can do will last 90% as long and do 90% of the work and handle 90% of the torque for like 30 per, for you know for like 40% of the cost. The Icon the straight handle uh, standard length half inch is $45 versus 30 for the Quinn. It's $40 for the Icon 3 8 straight handle ratchet where it's $30 for the Quinn. In that case, I mean, it literally is 40% cheaper to get a Quinn where you're only losing like 10% of the strength. And as far as the argument about high tooth counts, you know, in certain situations where you can only, you know, ratchet just a tiny amount and low back drag, I tell people, I really, that's my new basic recommendation is get a much heavier duty coarse tooth ratchet and then get a clutch ratchet, get some type of gearless ratchet. You will never beat the back drag on a gearless ratchet. It's almost zero. You'll never beat 
the ratchet angle of gearless ratchets because they can be at one degree or less. And that's my recommendation. Get gearless ratchets for, you know, ultimate low back drag and, and ratcheting angle. And then get some coarser tooth ratchets to be the heavy duty, high use ones. But that's kind of besides the point. I think overall, uh, I like that Harbor Freight has these gear wrench quins. And they probably don't realize exactly how good they are compared to the 40% more expensive icons. And yeah, I have one of these gold ones. I bought this used, but, uh, and they aren't lying about the low profile. The icon does have a real big switch that protrudes a lot more than the gear wrench. Surprising is the gear wrench can be so much thinner and have just about as, the same amount of strength. As far as the head width, not much difference. It's very little difference on how much wider the head is. Uh, maybe an eighth of an inch, two or three millimeters. And if we just compare the heights from the back of the head, we can see that there's almost a quarter inch difference in height. So it is much lower profile than the normal icons. And if we actually try to compare, it becomes even more dramatic if you count how much the switch sticks out on the icon versus these uh, quins, which has always been kind of a one thing to say about the uh, gear wrench design is that the switch is recessed. It's pretty small, but it's pretty flush. It's just less, less likely to get broken if it gets dropped. Anyway, sorry for the super long video, but I appreciate everybody who's been watching. See you next time.